Hello. We're talking today about transformations. These are geometric transformations. So they're a little bit different than other transformations we've talked about in other lessons, and you may have seen in algebra. These are not transformations of equations. These are when you take something and you flip it, turn it, slide it, or shrink it. Or I guess you could grow it. But it's not like growing plants. It's like a different type of growing. You'll see what I mean. All right, the first one we're going to talk about is reflection. And it's kind of like when you're looking in a mirror. This is when you flip an object. You have a line of reflection like this. And what the object does is it basically flips over that line of reflection. So this first original shape, or the pre-image, and this would be its reflection, in also known as the image. So this is our pre-image, and that's the image. And you just reflect it right over there. The way we label this is your pre-image has A, B, C, D. And your reflection, or your new image, would have the A, B, C, D with the little doohickeys on the top. I think that's the technical name for it, the doohickey. And if anyone wants to challenge me on that one, I think that we would have ourselves quite a bit of a situation. But these little doohickeys on the top there, that represents our new image. Oops. So we're going to draw a reflection now. It's just a practice. We've got this letter E, and we would reflect it over that line. Now, I'm, this isn't going to be a perfect reflection, but what I'm going to try and do is go, this is to make a couple of measurements. If that line is, or if that point is about that far from the line, the line of reflection, then I can grab that, try and keep it straight across, and start my new letter E right about at that point. So again, this is not an exact reflection because I'm drawing it as I go. But that's about how I would measure it. Now, I can also make some other lines that would help me if I draw a line from there to there. It should be the same distance from there to there. If I draw a line from the back of this letter E, all the way to there. That should be the same distance. So this will help me to make a pretty accurate reflection of what I need to do. So again, I'm taking these points, a couple of points here, and seeing how far is it to the line of reflection. Well, that's how far I'm going to have to take it beyond the line of reflection. So the next section I would have here is my letter E. Go from there. And again, I want to emphasize that this is not an exact reflection, but we're a little bit more of an accurate reflection. Let's see, I'm going to get from there to there. Oops. Sort of. Um, messed with my line there. And I'm going to take another one. And this is this really is a fairly accurate way to make a reflection. Um, this isn't the best tool using a classroom setting like this to, to make one. A better tool might be, whoops, that's definitely not quite right. Um, a better tool would be maybe to use a compass or a fair ruler, some kind of straight edge that would help so that this is more of an accurate measure here. And then I want to have something along the back. So again, not an exact by any stretch of the imagination. But that's kind of the method. You'd measure from certain points. Now, if you wanted to have a really accurate reflection, you would measure from all of the points around the outside, and then go the exact opposite measure of that on the other side of this um, line of reflection.
All right, so that's how we would do a reflection. The next is a rotation, a returning something. That's the other type of uh, transformation we're going to do. So basically, we return an object around a point. So here's our, our shape we're working with. It's a rectangle. And we would take it and we would turn it. Can't really see all of it yet because I haven't turned it quite enough. But basically, you're turning it around that point. And that's what rotation is. There's really not much more to that. If it's rotating around a certain point, it doesn't have to be the point there. It could actually be a point out here. And we could kind of rotate it in a swinging motion around that. But it, or it could be a point on the inside of it. And that would make the rotation a little bit different. But it's rotating around a given point. That's what rotation is. Translation, or the slide. It's like the electric slide, only not quite so musical is when you move an object without rotating or changing its size. Size. So if I have this beautiful heart and I move it, it's exactly the same size. I'm just sliding it over. That's all translation is. So I'm going to take this hexagon and I'm going to slide it up to there. That's it. That's what translation is. Again, it keeps the same size and you don't rotate it at all. That's called a translation. And it's not like bonjour that kind of a translation. All right, then there's dilation. This is the shrink. When you have a shape and you maintain the aspect ratio, essentially, but you shrink it down. You make it a different size. This could also work in the opposite direction where it grows. So it could start out as the little purple triangle and grow up to be the size of the, the brown triangle. All right, that is dilation. So it goes in and out. Think about it like when your eyes dilate. Right? They don't change what shape they are. They just kind of shrink and grow, grow and shrink. Same shape. One more part about transformation, and that is the isometric transformation. These are changes that do not alter the size of an object. All right? So in other words, the new shape or the image is congruent with the original shape or the pre-image. All right. If the image is congruent with the with the pre-image, then you have what we call an isometric transformation. So let's go ahead and pick out some isometric transformations. How about dilation? Does that maintain the same size, shape, pre-image and image? No, it does not. Dilation definitely changes the size of things. So that's definitely not isometric. How about translation? When we just take an object and we move it, we slide it. Yeah, that's a perfect example of, of isometry. Perfect example. How about rotation? You have a given point and you rotate around that point. What do we think? Does that maintain the same size of shape? Yeah, absolutely it does. And reflection? When an object is on one side of the reflection line and it's simply flipped over, does it have the same size? Yeah, it does. All right. All of the lengths are congruent. All right. So the shapes are the same. 